Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. God does not send anybody to heaven and God does not send anybody to hell. In fact, the reality is that we send ourselves. God gave us choice from the very beginning. We have a choice to choose to obey Him or to choose to disobey Him. But whatever the case may be, it is still a choice. And so we need to understand that God does not send anybody anywhere. We will send ourselves either into eternal reconciliation to God, where there is love, peace, joy, goodness, gentleness, faith, meekness, and temperance. We will be reunited in eternity in a new heaven and new earth with God in the presence of the fruits of His Spirit and who He is. We will be reunited in that, in perfection. But if we do not choose Him, then we will be separated from Him and all those attributes as well. And we will be in a place that was never made for us. But God does not send us there. We send ourselves there. The wages of sin is death. What does that mean? Well, let's define some terms. What are wages? Wages are earned payment, right? When we work, we earn a wage or a salary. That means that we have worked and therefore earned the payment that we're going to receive. And the Bible says that the earned payment, the wages of sin, is death. So we are going to be paid by God in death for our sin. And death is God's evidence to mankind that he is deadly serious about sin. So now that we know that the wages of sin is death, let us move on to the next part of the verse, which says, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So what we need to understand here is that every soul is eternal. Every person that is born into this world, conceived in their mother's womb, when you become a living soul, that is the time where you are eternal. From that moment onwards, you are an eternal being. So, this is the revelation. We are eternal beings, created by God in the image of God. That means that we will exist eternally. But we can only exist in one of two places. We can exist eternally with God, or we can exist eternally separated from God. And being separated from God is not hell, by the way. The Bible speaks of it for the eternal separation as a lake of fire that was never created for us, but for Satan and the fallen angels. So we need to understand that final point. There is no middle ground. Brother, sister, there is no middle ground. When we are with the Lord, we are with the Lord. When we are not, we are not. There are only two paths. There is the path to life and God, and there is the path to sin and death. And these are only two options. But a lot of people think they can stand in the middle and be indifferent. But let me tell you today, brother and sister out there, indifference is a choice. You are choosing to be indifferent. And your indifference is still a choice to deny the God who purchased you with the blood of Jesus Christ. So we need to make a choice. Are we going to obey God or are we going to disobey God? Those are the only two choices. And God revealed himself in the man of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was born into this world, not of man. He was not the son of Joseph, but the son of God. By the Holy Spirit, he entered into his own creation. And here he served us. He walked in his ministry for three and a half years. And then he took the sin of the world upon himself. And in the process of doing all of this, he fulfilled almost all the scriptures of the Old Testament prophets. Those which are remaining pertain to his future return. And there are very few that remain, but it pertains to his future return. And Jesus took our place, my place and your place, because the wages of sin is death. He took our place on that cross. And because he was without sin, even though he was tempted in every way, the same way that we are, he never sinned. And therefore his blood, being fully God and fully man, being the divine God man, took my place on that cross. I deserve that death. You deserve that death. And all human beings deserve that death because we are separated from a holy God by our sin. One lie is enough. The Bible says every liar will have their part in the lake of fire, the lake which burns with fire. So we need to understand how high God's standards are. One more I'm going to give you is if we look at a woman to lust after her, Jesus said, you have committed adultery already in your heart. You see how high God's standard is. But he made a way for us. Jesus took our place on that cross. He shed every drop of his blood so that we could be forgiven because the life is in the blood and the wages of sin is death. So it requires life. Life is required. 
because that is the law from the beginning. Sin was never meant to enter, but it did. And so God made a way, giving his only son for you and me. It's the greatest love story ever told. And Jesus was buried and he rose the third day, conquering death in the grave so that you and I have a promise in him that like he was risen from the dead, even if we die, we will live. Hallelujah. And he ascended to the right hand of the Father on the 40th day after his resurrection, where he is preparing a place. He sent the Holy Spirit so that we could receive. This is the message of the cross. And we must be born again. We must die to ourselves and rise up in newness of life, dying to the desires of our own hearts and rising up in newness of life to Jesus Christ. That it is no longer me that lives, but Christ who lives in me. Jesus is there preparing a place for us. The Holy Spirit is here ministering to us, to those who believe and are baptized, those who repent and turn from their sin. And Jesus will come again and he will collect his bride, his body, his church to himself. And the wrath of God will be poured out on the children of disobedience. God bless you guys.